Okay, so let's go ahead and fix these issues here. Uh, it's just going to be easy for us to rearrange a few things and maybe adding actually column inside. So not a big deal, just the cosmetics here. All right, so what I'm going to do actually is inside here, I'm going to create a new column, say new column as such. And inside of this new column, this is where I'm going to say cross alignment. I'm going to make it to start. like that okay and then I am going to add children inside of this this is where I'm gonna add all these other children so I'm gonna take this new text put it inside here and then this new container actually is going to also going to be inside of the inner container this is going to help us immensely if we save this let's go ahead and uh, give it a quick run again should hopefully have all those issues gone okay let's go ahead and add hello there we go as you can see now it looks much better we have no issue so now we have compartmentalized that problem let's see if we can make it work on iphone give it a run okay let's see see save okay so there we go Okay, so things are looking great in, on both iOS and I, iOS and Android. It's really good. Okay, so even the tapping is happening and we should all be happy. Okay, so now you notice that every time we run this application, even though items are being saved on both platforms, uh, they're not really showing when we rerun the application because we're not uh, repopulating our view with the data that we've saved. So let's change that. So going back to, let's go back to set state that we set up, you know, do screen here. So inside here, right now we're just inserting items to the screen the moment that we actually uh, submit items, okay? So we want to be able to also show the previous added, added items from previous section, right? Because this is all from the database. No do list, let's command and click and see where the implementation is. So, so far we just have it showing items from the database in our console. Of course, that's not what we want. We wanna be able to actually show the items and put them inside of our view, right? So for that to happen, we also have to do the same thing we did before, which is we need to go ahead and say set state, because we, again, every time that we need to uh, redraw the view, we have to call the set state. So inside of a set state here, we, all we have to do is actually say items list. We're gonna what we're gonna add. We're gonna just invoke the no do item map and pass in our item objects. Okay. And so now the reason why we had to create this. In fact, we don't need to do this anymore. We can just calm this out. It was just debugging. Now what are we saying? Every time that read no list, make sure. Notice that this is first thing that it's called when the state is instated, right? So every time that the state is instated, meaning that on init state, this is called, which is exactly what we need, right? Because what's going to do is going to go and get our database, get items, and we're going to loop through. And as we loop through, we're going to add all those items that we're getting into our, our item list. What is this item list we created here? and then we insert in here each time we add. And you notice that is also the same that we, we're using throughout the entire application here, right? We're getting the items list, the item name, and all that stuff. So we need that information to order for us to populate our view. Make sure that is indeed inside of a set state, because again, we want the state, we want the view to be redrawn with the new data. That is very important. Otherwise, you will see that nothing is going to happen if you just copy and write this in the outside of the set state. Save and give it a quick run here. We should be able to see everything that has been previously added. And this has to be, and look at that. 
You see, this is from previous view, previous time that we added all of this. So now check this out. Each time that we add something new, I can say build a new house. Say save. Look at that. It's adding there. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get rid of this the moment we hit save. Let's get rid of this pop up because this just looks not looks tacky. Well, let's go to save. I'm going to say command F save until we find where we save. It's about here. Uh, when we hit save on press, we handle everything. And let's go ahead and say navigator dot pop the context like this. So that will do the trick. Let's give it a quick run. Notice each time you run, it's going to go ahead and get all of the items previously added. See, this is good. So now we're getting things from our database every time we run. Okay, so let's add something new. Let's say, don't cry, save. Look at that. There we go. Don't cry, it's saving. Let's go ahead, uh, go to the end of the earth, save and so forth. So to show you that this is indeed working, I'm going to go ahead and say hardware and go home. So get out of the application. Okay. And then click again. Look at that. It's all persisted. It's all, all coming from the database. Ah, you see, and even the scroll up and down is working. We can do the same thing if you want on Android here. Let's keep adding something else. In fact, let's run once again. So we have all of the changes actually done for us. Sometimes you have to run twice to actually get the the new changes. I don't know why, but there we go. You can see all of the things that we've added before are already there. There's some repetition there. That's totally fine because we changed the code. Now on a neat state, it goes and fetches all the data that we've already added previous. Okay. So if I can want to add a new one, newest save goes away and you can see there we go there's newest there all right this is very cool isn't it very nice all right so there's something i wanted to explain before we move on because it may be something new uh, probably it is indeed something new that we haven't talked much about let's go to our no do uh note to do screen uh, we talk about trailing and all this stuff. So what are we doing here? We're creating a list view. You've done this before. Of course, we have to pass the item count and we're doing some padding here all around, right? So this padding is the padding around the entire uh, list view, okay? And uh, let's see. Now we're returning a card because we want to take advantage of list tile and all that stuff. And plus, we want to take advantage of the fact that we can actually have this delimitation that's really nice so it's very professional all right so of course for the title we're passing in the object here it goes and fetch the title uh, passing into object okay and then we have this on long press which we just doing debug print here but what we're gonna do on long press we're gonna be able to call the update function from our database so we can update this no to do item okay we'll work on that later but there's another a field here called trailing. So trailing, as you can see, you pass anything you want. In this case, we're going to pass a listener. So a listener is just another widget that allows us to actually, that will allow us to listen to events. In this case, we can pass the key. In this case, the key is just uh, passing the item name. Okay. And then we're passing the child another object, just the icon. So essentially now we get to get to see this delete icon there. Okay. And then we can pass the color and then there it is on pointer down. There's different events that we can capture, but it will pointer down, meaning that we have pointed, clicked, tapped, and our finger has tapped the screen, has tapped the uh, this circle here, right? This icon. We can pass our event pointer event and can do certain things with it. But in this in this point here, at this point, we're just going to call the bug print, which is uneventful but later we're going to create a delete 
Okay, so that is another new thing that we've never probably never seen before uh, that you can use. So you can actually create a listener object or widgets anywhere you want. That's the beauty of using Flutter because it gives us a lot of flexibility of customizing our views and do all sort of things. Perfect. So now that we have at least uh, our Android and our iOS app working, let's go and run both again, iOS. This time that I'm going to be running, I should see what previously has been added as well, if all goes well, of course. Give it a second for our iOS to boot up. And there we go. Like I said, this is what we added previously. So it's running the same application. And that's exactly what we want, right? To get uh, things from our database, which is exactly what's happening. So congratulations. And now if you are wondering why are we getting different items? Well, it is different because we are in different two different phones, right? <laughs> that's kind of obvious. But I just want to make sure some of you may say, well, Paolo, why is it that this on Android we have more? and on iOS we have less because really these are emulating two different uh, devices. So naturally they will have different uh, items depending on how many of them we've added for each one, all right? Perfect, so we're making a lot of progress here and um, I, hope, I hope this is making sense. If it's not, please rewatch the videos and ask questions that you may have. And also hold off with some questions until the end because what happens is sometimes we ask the questions that I'm covering in the next video. <laughs> it happens all the time, but that's no problem. If you find the urge of asking and just go ahead and do it, it's no problem. We won't judge you. All right, perfect. I'll see you in the next video.